Emperor Akihito is stepping down from the chrysanthemum throne. Now, this is the first time in 200 years that a Japanese monarch has abdicated. The emperor began the ritual of abdication a few hours ago at the Imperial Palace in Tokyo, where he reported his abdication to his mythological ancestors. The abdication will be completed in a short and simple ceremony at the palace in about two hours' time. Crowds of people are already gathering in front of the palace to witness that event. Akihito's reign ends at midnight when his son, his eldest son, Crown Prince Naruhito, will become the new emperor. And his era begins. And following this for us today is DW's Kiyodora, who grew up in Japan, reports uh, from there for us. Good morning to you. Um, Japan is, of course, a modern, high-tech nation, but it's also one steeped in, in tra tradition. What does this royal transition mean for the country this, this morning? Well, it is a very modern nation, but as you said, it um, lays a lot of... Uh, it's very important. The tradition is very important, and it is a very big deal. Um, I think it's uh, especially because the era l quite literally changes. And right now it's the 30th year of Heisei, and tomorrow it's going to be the first year of Rewa. And just the fact that it doesn't happen that often, as you said, it's once in 200 years, um, or the last time was 200 years ago. So it is um, basically a big celebration for the country. Akio, you, you said Rewa, the era of Rewa. That, that translates to... Beautiful harmony. Beautiful harmony. We'll, we'll be talking about that as part of uh, the ceremonies today. But um, how will this new era of, of Rewa be different? And how will the new emperor be different uh, than his father? Father. Um, his father already was quite um, a groundbreaker. Uh, he married a commoner. Um, he actually also apologized for Japanese war crimes. And he was very close to the common people. Um, he went and consoled... Uh, the victims of the 2011 disaster. And I think a lot of people say that Naruhito is going to follow in the footsteps of his father. And also, um, he's quite modern himself. Naruhito mm -hmm. studied abroad. He's the first one to he study abroad. went to Oxford? Abroad. Yes, yeah. went to Oxford, exactly. And he also criticized the strict court traditions, actually. So um, people do think that he may be uh, even more modern emperor than his father. Okay, uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. First, let's uh, take a, a closer look now at what the reign of Emperor Akihito means to Japan and its people. He wears the robes that Akihito was a groundbreaking figure long before he became emperor. In 1959, he married a commoner, Michiko, a major taboo, but the people loved it. The couple recently celebrated their 60th anniversary. Miwa and Satoshi hope their union will last that long. The two wanted to marry during the Akihito era. I spent 30 years of my life in this era, since I was a year old. We've lived through catastrophes, but I want to keep this time in my heart and enjoy the new era. Now Akihito is abdicating, the first emperor to do so for 200 years. A few years ago, after two operations, I sensed that my ability to lead was fading. Also in view of my age, I'm worried that I can't fulfill my job as symbol of the state with all my strength as I have up till now. Akihito's role is partly to act as the conscience of the nation. He's the official defender of the pacifist constitution, visiting war memorials and paying homage to victims of Japanese aggression. He has criticized attempts to justify Japan's military history, including by the ruling conservatives under Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Akihito's son, Naruhito, is supposed to carry on the tradition. In private, the two of them have a father-son relationship. I think the father has always passed on his wisdom. Not that he says, you have to do this. But I think the future emperor has learned much from the old one. A man rushes from the crowd and hurls a stone. Akihito's wedding didn't go off without a hitch. Stones were thrown and people tried to climb into the imperial coach. But Miwa and Satoshi enjoyed a day of peace and harmony. 
Well, peace, beauty, and harmony, as, as we mentioned, is the name of the new era in Japan when Naruhito assumes the throne. Um, what challenges will the new monarch uh, be facing during this new era? Well, the monarchy in itself has a big, big problem, and that is that they don't have male heirs. Um, actually, only two. One is the brother, whose name is Fumihito, and his uh, son, whose name is Hirohito. It's quite complicated. And only male heirs can assume the throne. Exactly. And uh, that has been a topic of big discussion for a long time, actually, because for a long time, only, there was only one grandchild, and that was a, a girl. And um, now, basically, in the modern era, because there's so few male heirs, there is probably going to be a new discussion about whether a woman can assume the throne or not. Now, the ceremonies today and tomorrow are, of course, being framed by very strict Shinto uh, rituals and, and traditions. What will we be seeing unfold as we watch over the next few hours? Um, there are th the three treasures, the three sacred treasures, um, that are going to be basically symbolically given back um, by Akihito, uh, which is the sword and then a gem and also a mirror. The two, the sword and the gem, are going to be given back. The mirror is somewhere else, stored somewhere else. Um, and those three uh, treasures, basically, mm -hmm. are shrouded in mystery. Nobody really knows what they look like. Um, and they're said to be di directly descending from the sun goddess Amaterasu, where the Japanese monarchy comes from thousands of years ago. Um, so we're going to see those in, encased in boxes, um, mm. and that's a very rare occasion, so look out for that. Okay, Kyo, thanks very much, and Kyo will be with us throughout the day following this DW's Kyo Dura. Thanks very much.